Oh my gosh, the gang's all here. The gang is literally all here. It's like I have a cat infestation. Oh my gosh. Don't you guys have jobs? What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 32. We're here. It's episode 32. Kevin is next to Powder Toast Man, who I'm testing out as a new co-host because Kevin is so worthless. As a co-host, I thought maybe this apron with Powder Toast Man on it would um, do a better job than him. And so far, I'm going to say uh, he is. Look, at he's smiling. He's smiling for the camera. He's happy to be here. Kevin's never happy to be here. He's not grateful at all. Um, anyway, guys, yes. Um, thank you for returning to watch another episode. I, I am so thankful for each each and every one of you. So something hilarious happened that I think that you guys will appreciate. Um, okay, so if you remember last week, I had the football episode. <laughs> and it's a, it was a little risky doing a football episode, right? Because notoriously, my audience is not like the sports ball fans, right? They're kind of like, yay, sports ball. Like most of my fans have kind of like, you know, of the nerdier persuasion and video games and, you know, stuff like that. Um, so it was kind of a risk, right? Talking about football, but you know what? I felt like it. And, uh, I, I picked a few parts of the process of doing a football game of doing the football that I found particularly funny. I think it's funny, um, that the, the dude on the ground has to throw the ball upside down and backwards through his butt to the other guy. And <laughs> I still think it's funny. I'm still laughing about it. Um, so, uh, Okay, but okay, let, let me set the scene though. Let me set the scene. So I ha I'm so blessed. I have like the greatest little group of followers and fans and online friends. Like you guys are the best. Like you're always saying nice things. You're always like interacting and, and engaging. That's the word they like to use. You guys are always talking to me. You're leaving positive comments. You're leaving funny comments. Um, like very, very rarely do I get anybody saying anything like mean, right? Like mean, like that was mean. Very rarely do I experience that. Super blessed in that way. Um, <laughs> however, so I clipped out the portion of last week's podcast where I was talking about the funny football stuff and how I think it's so cute, how they like hit their marks, like it's a jazz routine, routine and they're like in West Side Story and how the players wear yoga pants. <laughs> I just like, <laughs> just saying the stupidest stuff, right? So I'm out and I've had a couple drinks. And not too many, not too many. Your girl's responsible. I had a couple drinks and I noticed um, on Facebook that it was like, hey, uh, you have some comments on this video on Facebook that you haven't looked at yet. You should go look at that. And I'm like, cool, I'll do it right now. And um, some of those comments were super mean. They were real mean. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on? Because uh, my my comment section in my videos on my social media profiles is very kind. It's very very kind. It's like a party all the time. It's like we're having a barbecue. So I'm like, who's the angry yellow jacket at my pool party? At my pool party slash barbecue? Who who's ruining who's ruining the party? Who is the toenail in the ground beef? Who is the Who's the poop in the ball pit? <laughs> Wait, uh, I got, I got more. Wait, um, <laughs> who is the, po who is the police officer with the breathalyzer at the Jack in the Box drive through at 2 a.m.? <laughs> Who's trying, hey, we're trying to have a good time. What are you doing? Why are you trying to ruin the part? Ain't no, you know who you are. Ain't nobody going through that drive through at 2 a.m. A Jack in the Box, having had nothing. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And I don't condone that, but still, it's a thing. So anyway, look at the comment section, and I'm like, what's going on? Um, and then I break my, my rule. I break my rule. I start commenting. I start replying to the comments. Again, having had a couple drinks, and I'm like, these guys are mean. I'm going to reply and be like, you know, you don't have to watch this. You can click away. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry for existing. <laughs> Stupid stuff, guys. So dumb. Because I thought we had a couple just like bad eggs in the big egg basket. That's the worst one so far. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but then the next morning I woke up and I realized that that video had half a million views in a very short period of time. And I went, oh, okay, that's why. Then it's okay. Once 
I've talked about this before, like going viral with my uh, holiday recipe video, how it did like millions of views in like the first week or so. Your tail is just in my way, girl, Kevin. Your tail is just like whapping me. It's really throwing me off. So when you have a video that just goes out to your followers, great. Yes, we're having our party. We're, we're doing our comments. I recognize your username. You recognize, you recognize that guy. We're, having, we're making friends in the comments, like Crystalia says, like we're having a good time. But then when you have a video that goes viral, which I'm not saying half a million is viral, but for me, that's pretty good. If you have a video that is half a million, all of a sudden you're going outside your comfort zone. You're going outside your party and you're talking to people who have never heard of you before. They, you know, they, they don't know you. They don't know your content. And then they, they're the ones that start saying mean stuff. Like, look at, she that cake do- look at all her caked on makeup, which like, <laughs> I don't, I don't even wear that much makeup. Um, but uh, these football fans that it reached got a little butt hurt and a little cranky, and I'm fine with that because, uh, dang, that got a lot of views. Turns out when you make timely content about things that are happening in the world right now, people watch that. You know, that's, you get these social media managers, and they're like, you need to make relevant, timely content and follow trends. And I'm usually like, no. I'm going to do my own thing. And if people watch, great. And if they don't, that's fine. I haven't sold out. I haven't sold my soul. Um, <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of fun that that, uh, that did a lot of views. And um, I don't really care about the mean comments. I just, um, you know, you girl, you know, she has a couple drinks. and She's like, let's fight, <laughs> which is actually unlike me because I'm a very, very nice, very nice drinker. Anyway, guys, um, I have Instagram subscribers if you want to subscribe to me on there. I also have an updates channel on Instagram, which is really fun because I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to operate this updates channel on Instagram. So I've just been doing weird stuff. Um, like I've just been kind of treating it like my diary. I've been telling um, my deepest, darkest secrets in there. <laughs> so if you're on Instagram, go follow my um, uh, Lisa fans updates. Well, I don't even know what I call it. I don't even know what I call it. It was like an update channel. And I told a story in there recently that I was, um, I should just save for the update channel, but it's, it was so funny when I was writing it that I'm like, I need to just say this on the podcast. So in all that, I was on all that. <laughs> Surprise, I was on a Nickelodeon show called all that. I only mention it once every episode. I'm sure you're sick of hearing about it. Um, Kids' Choice Award winning actress Lisa Foyles was on four seasons of sketch comedy show. Um, All that. So in season eight, me and Shane Lyons, who my friend, he, he and I were super good friends. You're whipping me with your tail. You're not Indiana Jones, okay? My cat is just sitting on my chair, whipping me with her tail like she's upset about something. You mad? Use your words if you're mad. Don't use your tail. Um, so anyway, so Shane and I, we were super good buddies. Uh, we were sitting in the schoolroom one day. And I'm like, I have this big crush on Elijah Wood. And he's like, I know. You talk about it all the time. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, really, I'd go for any of the hobbits. But he's kind of like, he's the main one that I really like. I think it's those eyes, you know, those Elijah Wood eyes. Um, he does have beautiful eyes. Um, but Shane and I were like, what are we going to do about this? <laughs> we were so bored. We had nothing to do. And Shane's like, I think that we should start an internet rumor that you're dating Elijah Wood. And I said, that's an excellent idea. Let's absolutely do that. Let's start a massive rumor. Let's get that gossip machine. <laughs> that's the gossip machine. We're starting up the gossip machine. And, um, <laughs> you started up like, that's how it goes. <laughs> oh my God, did you hear about <laughs> That's when you know you got to start it. Oh my God, did you hear about it? Oh my God, did you hear about it? Oh my God, did you hear about it? That's the gossip machine. So we're like, let's start up that gossip machine. Let's get this gossip. Go- let's get this thing going. Because in my mind, I'm like, look, I got a crush on Elijah Wood. He's massively famous. Lord of the Rings just came out. <laughs> I'm also famous. Not nearly as famous as Elijah Wood, but I, you know, I was on, people knew me. It was a thing. And uh, I'm like, look, if this rumor gets so big, Elijah Wood's going to see it. And then he's probably going to want to just date me out of convenience. Because people already know. Like, people already think that. Why not? (laughs) Why not us? (laughs) Why not us? My favorite sports movie quote. Um, So Shane's like, let's do it. 
Um, so I'm pretty sure that he posted one one time on one message board. You remember when IMDb used to have like message boards? I don't know if they still do, but you used to have like message boards for each movie to be like, this one sucks. <laughs> she looked like a turtle in this movie. Oh, Kevin. Kevin just ruined Powdered Toast, man. I, I'm going to have to fix it. Hold on. Just, just give me a second, please. You should go He was just very jealous about the fact that I had another co-host here that wasn't him, and he had to just go and ruin it. Thanks a lot, Kevin. <clears throat> so anyway, um, yeah, so Shane posted this rumor one time on one message board. And guess what? TMZ never called. It never went crazy. The machine was never started. It was just that That's not even the sound. What happens when, you're, when your battery is like, it's like, it's like a clicking sound. And you're like, oh, no, time for a new battery. The machine was never started. Um, so, um, so the rumor never really went crazy. But in my mind, in my mind, I had this all planned out, right? I think I was like 15 or 16. And I was like, this is how it's going to go. This rumor is going to get out of control. And now I'm going to be at a publicity event with Elijah Wood. And we're going to see each other. And we're going to be like, oh, my God, Hi. <laughs> And like, <laughs> so we meet each other for the first time. Just so you know, when I was going to start this rumor that I was dating Elijah Wood, I'd never met him even once. And I still have it. To this day, I still have not. But I figured we'd go to, a, we'd go to an event. The Oscars, maybe. Because I was, I was already delusional. Let's just go, let's just go all the way. Full delusion. I'm like, I'm going to be at the Oscars, nominated for Best Actress, in whatever movie I'm going to be doing in um, a few months. So, um... Elijah and I are going to see each other and it's going to be like really awkward at first because everybody's talking about us and we're, there's this rumor. And so we're going to, we will come up to each other and I'll be like, Hey, maybe like, Hey, <laughs> his eyes. Hey, I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's so nice to meet you. Um, even though I feel like I like already know you <laughs> and you're like, yeah, pretty awkward. Huh? Like everyone in the whole world thinks we're dating. Everyone in the whole world thinks we're dating. And I'll be like, yeah, maybe we should, though. <laughs> Wouldn't that be super funny? And he'll be like, yeah, maybe we should. And then we'd lock eyes. And then we'd start dating, and then we'd get married. And that's how I saw it happening in my head. Well, it didn't happen that way, and that's fine. It's really for the best. Um, Honestly, the best thing that came out of it is that I, I had read in like one of those teeny bopper, teeny bopper magazines that he was a massive Smashing Pumpkins fan. So I'm like, well, we, when we start dating, this is going to come up. He's going to want to talk about the Smashing Pumpkins. So I'm going to need to know. So I started listening to like every Smashing Pumpkins song on like a loop. I had like, I need to get familiar. I was very committed to this. <laughs> <laughs> this idea that I was going to be dating Elijah Wood. So I listened to like every Smashing Pumpkins song. And the cool part is that I actually became a fan. I was like, dang, this is actually a really good band. And that's how I became a Smashing Pumpkins fan, trying to use it as a, um, a talking point when I was going to date my new boyfriend, Elijah Wood. Um, but it didn't happen. Anyway, so that's a stupid story, but let's get to the meat of it. Uh, yeah, a couple, 13 minutes in. Let's get to the meat of it. So on Instagram, I posted, I actually, I reposted something from Melissa Joan Hart recently um, <clears throat> where it, it had a bunch of logos of Nickelodeon shows and you had to pick three only. You could only pick three. And of course, the All That logo was in there. So I reposted it to my fans and I'm like, Hey, y'all, choose three. Choose wisely. Be smart, because I'm watching you. That all that logo's on there. You better be smart about it. So the three, I'm going to show the image um, on the screen for the uh, YouTube viewers, but for everybody who's an audio listener, here are the shows that were listed. You can only keep three. You can only keep three. Choose wisely. You got Rugrats. You got Keenan and Kel. Blue's Clues, Angry Beavers, Clarissa Explains It All, Ren and Stimpy, All That, Are You Afraid of the Dark, Cat Dog, Harriet the Spy, Guts, Hey Arnold, Doug, SpongeBob SquarePants, Figure It Out, and Rocco's Modern Life. <laughs> if you're watching the video, I was like trying to count on my fingers, and then at one point, I like, there was too many, so then I just 
I stopped counting on my fingers. I don't know what I, where I was going with that. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So I'll show the I'll show the image on the screen for the people watching. Um, so uh, Melissa Joan Hart posted this. Everybody knows Melissa, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Clarissa explains it all. She's amazing. She's she's a legend. She picked three. She picked Ren and Stimpy, all that, and then Round Roundhouse, <laughs> which Roundhouse wasn't on there. So. Um, we can assume that she picked her own show. <clears throat> Clarissa explains it all. Hold on, I need a drink. Wait, can you play? Can we play the TJ Maxx theme song while I get a drink? Cause my throat. <clears> throat. You should go. Okay, I'm back. So, we got all these Nick shows, right? And I was thinking to myself, what three am I gonna pick? But before we get to me, everything's about me. It's my podcast. I'm gonna talk about. Hey, you guys, I got nearly 200 responses to this. Everybody writing in answers. It wasn't just a poll. Like people had to physically type out words. So I'm just going to read um, a couple of them here. I would say 95% of them said all that, which thank you guys. Um, but some of you didn't. Very bold of you. Let's see. Uh, Toys R Us. Josh, love Josh. He said all that, obviously. Rocco, are you afraid of the dark? Um, let's see. My friend China said, I legit wore cat dog outfits in the nineties and thought I was serving, <laughs> but I also watched all these shows. So it's hard. Um, and then she did, she did send me a picture of her wearing the cat dog shirt. And I'm going to show that on here because I love her so much. She's the best. Let's see who else. I'm just going to read some random ones here. And if your name gets read out, good for you. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm literally just picking people. Um, okay. Uh, Clifford, yes, all that, Keenan and Kel, Rugrats, Young Tekken, all that, Keenan and Kel, Rugrats. Wow, they said the exact same thing, and I read them back to back. Awesome. Good job, Lisa. Um, I can't, this is so small. Dan, Dan Instagram, Dan Instagram poop. Love it. He was like, my name's Dan, and I'm starting an Instagram account. What should I call it? Dan Instagram. Nope, doesn't have enough flair. What should I add? Maybe some to the end of it? Dan Instagram poop. Love it. Nailed it. Enter. <laughs> um, Dan Instagram poop said SpongeBob, Angry Beavers, all that. That's solid. Um, Gunmetal, Gunmetal Mario. Oh my gosh, I'm like blind. This writing is so small. Keenan and Kel, all that. And SpongeBob. Lots of all that. Lots of Keenan and Kel on here. Missing no one says Ren and Stimpy, Guts, and Rocco. Interesting. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Sima, Sima, Sim as Sim as Boy K. I never know how to read these. Sim as Boy K. Hey Arnold, all that. Kim Mikel. Yeah, there's so many, but mostly across the board was all that. Thank you guys. Marco Tix said all that times three. Thank you. Suck up. Love you. <laughs> yeah, because these are all great. Thank you guys so much for chiming in. I read every single one of them. So now we got to figure. Now we got to figure it out the name of one of the shows i'm gonna i'm gonna look at each of these shows and i'm gonna really think about it because i was a massive nickelodeon massive nickelodeon kid not just because i was on the channel but even before i got on all that nickelodeon was what i watched disney that's fine disney was more for like the goody two-shoes kids <laughs> the like the rich kids in your class like whatever dude nickelodeon was for like the real ones the real ones watch nickelodeon Every single one of these I watched, um, except maybe two. We'll get to that. Okay, so let's start with Rugrats. Rugrats. I was not a massive Rugrats fan, but I found myself just watching it because it was on. So I've probably seen every single Rugrats episode just because it was on, not because I actively would look for it. Can't ever remember actively trying to go watch Rugrats. It was just, it was there and I watched it. Um, although I do appreciate the, uh, the memes now where you look at the Rugrats parents, I think Stu is the dad and they're like, look how old and tired this man looks. <laughs> And he's like 29 or something like that. I forget the exact age, but he's like younger than, he's like younger than me. Like probably most of us, like these parents. So when we were a kid, they just looked just so old and exhausted and frustrated and tired and working their office jobs at just nine to five at the grueling, you know, life of being a father with a baby. And it's like, oh, he's 27. <laughs> so funny. Um, all right. Keenan and Cal. Loved Keenan and Cal. Of course, they're the sweetest guys in the world. But uh, this was a really interesting show that followed a formula every single week where something very, very frustrating would happen. 
Like they would get themselves into a pickle right at the beginning. And then they had, you know, two commercial breaks, <laughs> they had three acts and two commercial breaks um, to, to solve it, to get it all figured out. And there was some orange soda involved. And there was Keenan going, why? And uh, all sorts of shenanigans. But you know, you didn't even mind that it, it followed a predictable formula every week because it was just so creative and the dialogue was so good. Um, that's, that's up there for me. That's a contender, Keenan and Cal. Plus that, oh, the, oh, wasn't it Coolio at the, um, in, in the theme song? They shot it at um, Universal Studios. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting too far into it. Next, Blue's Clues. It's weird that this one's in here, right? Because this is like a little kid's show and all these other ones seem to be like a little bit old, a little bit older. But I'd be lying if I didn't say that I watched, I watched Blue's Clues when I was little. I don't even know when it started. I was probably too old to watch it at the time. But I enjoyed it because, dude, Steve was the best. Dude, Steve got it, right? You'd watch these other kids shows, like the ones on Noggin, the shows for little kids. And the hosts would be like too over the top and just like too bubbly and super fake. I feel like Steve was like a, was a real one. Like he was real with me. He'd look me straight in the eyes. He looked deep into my eyes through that camera lens. Stop hissing. He would look deep into my eyes through that camera lens and be like, are you familiar with the color yellow? <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, Steve, I've seen it before. Yeah, you know what? I am familiar with it. And he'd be like, that's great. Good. F stop. The hissing has to stop. The hissing has to stop. I'm ha trying to have a moment with Steve from Blue's Clues right now. Totally ruined it. Dude, I was in the zone. I was like... See, that's, they're the reason I would never be at the Oscars with Elijah Wood because I can't be nominated for Best Actress in, the, in a movie because I've got the hissing and the violence that's constantly distracting me from my craft. Can you guys stop and just get along for two seconds? Um, so anyway, dude, Steve was the best. And the other two hosts, they're great. Uh, I don't remember their names. There was, um, oh, this is awful. But I stopped watching it. There was Steve from Blue's Clues. And then the guy, the next one, he was like in purple. He was also super nice. And then the most recent dude, so nice. I don't remember. This is so awful. Okay, I need to, this is really bad. I need to Google this. Okay, Blue's Clues hosts. We've got, here we go. Oh, Donovan. Yeah, there's Donovan Patton, but that wasn't his name, right? He didn't, Joe, he went by Joe. He didn't go by Donovan. He went by Joe. So there was Steve Burns, there's Donovan Patton as Joe, and then there's Josh. Dude, Josh is the new one. He's great. They're, they're all great. They were all great in their own way, but S Steve was OG, man. He was so good. And you know what I did? I was familiar with the color yellow, and he was proud of me for that. Anyway, um, it's just weird that it's in this group. Moving on. Angry Beavers. Pretty obvious I'm going to pick this one. I'm wearing the Angry Beaver shirt. Guys, this was my favorite. It was always a competition between Rocco's Modern Life and Angry Beavers for me because they were both so ridiculous and out of the box and irreverent. I'm all about the irreverent humor. Um, I really don't... Here's the thing. You have shows like Angry Beavers, Ren and Stimpy, Rocco's Modern Life, so irreverent, so many like adult jokes in there that I don't think would ever get approved nowadays. But they were so insane. The plots were just so outrageous that I don't think if those shows happened that we would ever gotten on board with Adult Swim. Okay, anyway, so um, I don't think we ever would have gotten on board with Adult Swim, like Space Goes Coast to Coast, Tim and Eric, like these weird... You guys, I'm gonna... Next cat who fights on my set, I'm throwing a shoe at him. I'm throwing this shoe at them. Stop. Oh, these cats, man. Okay, anyway. Yeah, uh, Angry Beavers was amazing. Uh, let's, okay, whatever. You guys know the show. Moving on. Clarissa explains it all. I really liked it. Um, I didn't, again, I, I didn't really seek it out. I watched it when it was on, but no, I remember it being a great show. I couldn't explain a single episode to you, honestly. That's sad because it was a great show and I watched it all the time, but I can't even remember like one plot line. Um, I'm sure if I watched a couple YouTube videos, it would all 
come, it'll all come back to me. Next, Ren and Stimpy, but by the way, Melissa Joan Hart, so, so, so amazing, so incredibly talented. And when she guest starred on all that, so sweet, incredibly sweet. She took time to take pictures with all of us, really nice. Next, Ren and Stimpy. You know what? I never actually watched Ren and Stimpy that much. <laughs> I was, look, I was a weird kid. I watched weird cartoons, very strange little child. But even for me, Ren and Stimpy was a little much. It was a little much. Um, so I didn't really watch too much Ren and Stimpy. Obviously, all that is on there. I'm not even going <laughs> to... Yeah. Um, love it. Um, uh, are you afraid of the dark? Couldn't watch it. Tried many times. Nothing gave me nightmares. Like, are you afraid of the dark? Oh, my gosh. The clowns on that show. Like, the fun house. The one where, like, the Nosferatu guy comes out of the theater of the movie screen the hissing needs to stop can we all just get along Jeez, these cats so much hissing this episode has been mostly hissing are you afraid of the dark but yeah no they like they knew how to do it right it was like the goosebumps books and it was are you afraid of the dark those were the two things that scarred us all as children in the 90s and early 2000s oh my gosh they did such a good job next cat dog i love cat dog but uh Again, I think that was more of a show that was just, it was on all the time, so I would sit and watch it. Um, I would just love to be in that pitch meeting. So you got a TV show for me? So you got a children's cartoon show for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's about a cat and a dog. Oh, that sounds lovely. Children love animals such as cats and dogs. Yeah, except it's only, it's only one body. What? Yeah, the f one part of it is a cat and the other part of it is a, is a dog. Oh, well, that's... That's very strange. <laughs> like, how did they pitch that in the meeting? Once you, once you have that log line, like, okay, uh, it's a show about the everyday lives um, of a cat and a dog who are connected together and they don't have butts. That, how do you, uh, what do you, where do you go from there? And how did so many people sign on to that? <laughs> well, I'm glad they did because it's a great show. Next, Harriet the Spy. That was a movie, this, right? This doesn't make sense because all these are TV shows, but then Harriet the Spy was a movie, one of the Nickelodeon movies with like Michelle Trachtenberg and Rosie O'Donnell, I think. Don't remember watching it. Don't remember watching it. Um, so can't really comment on it. Guts was not, was not really a big Guts fan. I know my friend Josh Mattingly, a huge uh, Guts fan, so he's going to be mad at me, but he doesn't watch this. So it's totally fine. It's totally fine. You can say whatever you want about your friends on a podcast if they don't listen. Look at how much bad things I say about my friend James. I'm constantly just ragging on him, talking about him eating chocolate out of my kitchen, eating hot chocolate bombs out of my kitchen, just raw, without even putting them in hot water or hot milk. I can go on and on about that because he doesn't listen. And that's great. It's great for me. Um, okay, Hey Arnold. Dude, Hey Arnold was such... Hey Arnold might be the best show on this whole list just because of how it really was a groundbreaking show. Um, do you know that Bo Burnham song where he's like, I grew up as your usual suburbanite, a tiny town in Massachusetts, overwhelmingly white, 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 white. <laughs> so I grew up in Spokane, Washington. And yeah, it was pretty overwhelmingly white. Um, not to say I didn't see people from other races or who, people who didn't look like me. And I wasn't, you know, not that I wasn't tolerant of that. Like I was all accepting, like it was all good. I'm so sorry about the fighting and the hissing. It's, it's just out of control. Hold on, I'm good. Stop. Stop it. I will throw the other shoe if it continues. Come here, come here, come here. Fine, go away. Um, but yeah, definitely um, very, very white city that I grew up in. But watching Hey Arnold, it did such a good job of representing so many people from different walks of life, right? Just even in the apartment building that Arnold lived in with his grandpa and his crazy grandma, who I definitely aspire to be like when I'm older. Um, you know, just Mr. Huynh and, and just every, you know, even just all the kids, you know, who went to this school and how different they all looked and their different cultures and their backgrounds and the way they talked and their interests. Like, I was so into that. It was this cool little melting pot um, TV show. And, um, just they they were able to represent this kind of lower class of of people which look I wasn't rich growing up or anything like that you know we we did okay but uh just the way they represented um this group of people these characters who were not you know upper class at all and just the way that they 
just enjoyed life and had so much fun and had the best friendships and the best relationships and just lived these incredibly full lives because that's really what it's all about. You know, they didn't have, um, a ton of money, but they had, they had this family of people that surrounded them and I'm getting way too deep for this comedy podcast, but uh, I just want to thank the creators of Hey Arnold. I think they did an amazing job. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was a good one. And plus Dan Castellaneta, the voice of Homer Simpson was the voice of grandpa. He was incredible. Um, all right, Doug. Look, I love Doug, but uh, I don't know. There's that whole controversy of like Disney bought it for a while and like kind of ruined it. I know what that's all about. Dude, we love Doug for the theme song and we love Doug for um, Quail Man and the beats. <laughs> oh, there's some good stuff from Doug. I do love Doug. I just, I don't know if it holds a candle to some of the other, some of these other ones. SpongeBob SquarePants, man, those first two seasons, incredible. Well, actually, no, even the first like, the first like four or five seasons, they're all, they were so, so good. I have not watched the later seasons. After the movie came out, I wasn't a big fan of the first SpongeBob movie. I went to the premiere and I had a great time, but I wasn't like a massive fan of the first movie. It just seemed so different from the, from the early episodes. After that, I kind of stopped watching because I was kind of getting older. So I was, you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, gosh, that's such a good, that's such a good show. Just the relentless positivity of SpongeBob as a character is so refreshing. I think that's similar to why people got so on board with Ted Lasso because Ted Lasso was basically SpongeBob. <laughs> he just relentlessly positive and it's contagious. He has this infectious optimism. And I always admired that about both Ted Lasso and SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, <laughs> shout out to my favorite moment on Jeopardy. It was like kids Jeopardy or like college Jeopardy or something. And um, one of the kids rang in the answer well, I guess, um, the question was, what is, what is SpongeBob? And, uh, he rings in and he's like, do, 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 do. and they're like you. And he's like, SpongeBob. And then there's like this pause and he goes, SpongeBob SquarePants. And Alex is like, yes, correct. <laughs> like, like they didn't know who it was when he just said SpongeBob. Like he had to specify which SpongeBob. Oh, SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay. We kind of knew that. We kind of knew that. SpongeBob should have just been acceptable. Figure It Out, loved it. I, my favorite game show as a kid. Obsessed with Figure It Out. It, the show ended right before I got on all that, so I did, never got to live my dream of being on the show because uh, it ended with season six of all that. And I started season seven, so unfortunately I never got to be on it, but I was slimed many times. I think I met Summer Sanders at One Kid's Choice Award. She was nice. Um, and then, of course, Rock was Modern Life. Dude, it's, you just you cannot get better than Rocco's Modern Life. That show's incredible. The things they got away with on that show. Like at one point, like Heifer gets, like doesn't Heifer get sent to hell at one point and then like Rocco's working for like a, a sex phone line or <laughs> like an operator for like a sex line. <laughs> oh my gosh, the crazy things they got away with on that show. But by far the Wacky Deli episode just takes the cake. I mean, even as a, it was so meta, and watching it now as an adult, it's, of course, twice as funny. But even as a kid, like, I could totally get what's going on and get what was going on. And now it's even more relevant with TikTok and all these social medias. So basically, the premise of this episode was that uh, there was this art. He was an artist and a writer and an animator. His name was Ralph Bighead. I think it was the son of Mr. and Mrs. Bighead. And, uh, you know, he was just so sick of writing all of these TV shows for his studio. He wanted out of his contract. And they're like, you can't get out of your contract and go be a real artist until you give us one more TV show. <sighs> and he just didn't want to do it. So he handed it off to Filbert and Heifer and Rocco to make their very own TV show, thinking that they would completely mess it up. Um, and, uh, yeah, they made the most ridiculous ever show called Wacky Deli and it's just all over the place. And, uh, <laughs> Philbert's character was the cheese who just kept going. I am the cheese. I am the best character on this show. I'm better than both the salami and the bologna combined. And there's, then one character would just burp for a while. The animation was all crude and shoddy. They'd every once in a while cut to like found footage of like somebody with a meatloaf. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But they loved, but the audience loved it. The worst show of all time. Audience loved it. Ratings through the roof. So then Ralph Bighead is like, what? This is not going according to plan. So then he tries, so Ralph tries to sabotage what they got going on. And then the next episode, he's like, what if we just hold on a jar of mayonnaise for all 30 minutes of the show? And they're like, what? That doesn't seem like a good idea. And he's like, just do it. And then they do it. And it's a massive, it's a massive hit. Like just the stupidest stuff is a massive hit. And isn't that kind of the world we live in right now? Isn't that why my football video uh, got half a million views by being so stupid? 
Um, but yeah, no, Rocco was, um, was incredible. So anyway, if I, I got to wrap up here cause I'm already over time. Ah, but if I had to pick three, I would pick, I would pick all that. Just not even my seasons, just before I ever became an actor, I was obsessed with all that. It's I think what turned me into a comedy actor in the first place, I would pick all that angry beavers and Rocco's modern life. But that is a tough call because all of these are so good. Keenan and Kel really big runner up. I would switch out blues clues and Harriet, the spy on this list for the adventures of Pete and Pete and probably salute your shorts. I think those are two that I think deserve to be on this list more than those two. Archie, the strongest man in the world. Anyway, bye guys. so mad at you Kevin I'm so mad at you I'm so mad at you sit and look at Kevin sitting there with powdered toast man just smug would you like to apologize to the listeners for all of the violence that you caused during this show no got nothing to say huh tight-lipped can't stay mad at you